Anyway, I've got to do the second side now. Now obviously this is the point where it becomes dangerous. Uh, but what we've got here is four 20S packs. We've got the positive and the negative off that pack there. So all that is one pack and then we've got that one there which is a pack and blah blah blah. So when I connect the series connections on the other side when I've finished those will become live with 84 volts and that will be 84 volts and that will be 84 volts so there's plenty of room for electric shocks on this one <laughs> you'll see that I haven't done there so I've got to do there I, I actually mark the first one here I put two dots on the first one that I've got to do which is that one and then I'll know that that one is a series and then I know that I've got to do that one it's just, it's just a precaution just as a side note I've got another mouse mat made actually I've got two mouse mats now I don't know where to start making them what do you think? One thing I've learned is never take anything for granted with these batteries. Now, I have just checked both sides on, on this one here. Now, we're running at 84, I think it's 84 volts in that pack now. Um, what I'm going to do now, 100% with the pattern that I've got, is make sure that the pattern is identical on that side and make sure that I can just blatantly <laughs> I can just go along with this pattern here and make sure that everything is absolutely 100% perfect complacency with these things is so so dangerous you wouldn't believe I, I still make mistakes I still make mistakes so While I think about it, the other reason why I've done this in separate, in four separate packs. Now, the maximum that each one of these is going to draw, I've stopped touching it, the maximum these is going to draw is 40 amps per pack. So that's 160 amps in total. So you can get away with thinner um, nickel wire. What I've started doing is, which makes it easier, I've started bending the tabs over a bit. So as they go around uh, the positive, it just makes it easier to, for me when I finish to tuck it all in. That's one battery done anyway. Uh, I'm going to move on to the second battery, which I've already marked up positive negative. I've already cleaned all the terminals off with isopropyl alcohol, uh, which is something that you should do to stop any contaminants getting between the nickel and the actual surface itself. What happens is if you get contaminants on there, um, it sparks. It can spark. So you're best just to wipe it all off, make sure everything's completely clean. So I've got to go through and check all these cells, which I should have done from the start. The other ones was something like about 10 millivolts, absolute maximum difference in the cells. So I'm pretty bloody pleased with that. So I'm going to go through all these and then I can start spot welding them. Two millivolts. Two millivolts difference on the cells. Two, two millivolts. <laughs> these, with fog start, you're not paying the cheapest that you could buy Samsung 25Rs for but you're paying for number one genuine and number two guaranteed you know if you buy them from another bloody somewhere in the uh, somewhere else in the world you, you got the hassle of sending them back I put too much VHB on here I didn't need it uh, this this other stuff that I bought which I've held this pack together with um, it's very, very, <laughs> this pack is not coming apart again, but it is, it's 
quite a flexible stuff. I'm amazed actually. And it was a lot cheaper from RS. So I'll leave a link in the description. Obviously it's not an affiliate link because it's for RS and they don't do affiliate shit. With this pack design, uh, I mean everybody else they do parallel blah 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 and then they get 84 volts coming out either end. Well, with this design, that's zero. There's no voltage going through there whatsoever so it's completely safe to actually pick it up wherever you want to do. The only time that you're going to get problems is if you touch that terminal there. I mean that's fully charged 84 volts. But if I touch there, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. You could put your tongue on there and it wouldn't hurt because there's no voltage going through it. So anyway, I've got to put that there and that's got to go there. Um, I've got to do obviously the, the, the mirror image of this and then I'll put terminals on there facing upwards, solder to it, wires across there, jobs are good. And the only difficulty I'm going to have is balancing the packs, balancing everything together, which is going to take more wiring, but I think it's worth it. Uh, it's going to be sacrificial wiring as well, so as if anything happens to any of the cells, or a, a bank of cells, it should short out a single wire, and then the pack will keep going. Uh, I got carried away. <laughs> I've gone one too many. I've discovered that whilst I'm waiting for the spot welder to cool down, I can lie on the bed and bend the tabs over. It's quite therapeutic. You know they say if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Well, doing it this way, bending these tabs over and putting it on the positive side, saves a lot of pissing around afterwards trying to fold them in. So, that's what I do whilst I'm waiting for it to cool down. Now, you could either do that or you could go over with a screwdriver or a file. I use a file sometimes um, because it's got this doesn't slip this end so you can go over all the positive tabs and everything and bend all the edges over or you could use a screwdriver and go over that's while it's cooling down so you've got plenty to do while it's actually while you can't do anything but at the moment I've discovered that I can lie down and do this <laughs> I spot welded the two packs and they're going to go like this. Uh, now the downside of doing independent packs, so there's eight packs, is the balance wires. And what I'm going to have to do is, I've got a link and we'll say for instance that one has got to be linked to that one and it's got to be linked to that one and that one to keep all those in balance. And then I've got to do the same with that one, and that one, and that one, and that that one. So I'm going to have a lot of balance wires over here, but also they've got to be linked to this one. So it might look like I've done this in one day. I haven't. It's taken me four days to do this, just the spot welding. And then I've got probably another four days of um, soldering, because I've got to solder the wires on. I've still got to put the main positive and negative terminals on, which I'm just going to use... Um, the same nickel um, but I'm going to wrap the power wires around it but the balance wires they're just going to be, what's this, about 28 AWG I think it is it's only got to handle an amp any more than an amp, if, it's, if one pack starts drawing more than an amp more than the other then in theory it will fuse the wire I've put the balance wires uh, they're actually pack balance wires, not just cell balance wires, they do both. I've put them on that side and I'm just about to do them on this side. 
just to prove that I do things properly and take up every piece of flux off because it's corrosive. If you're worried about the solder, the solder is only actually in contact, what, two seconds? There's no heat transfer through that because it's on the bridge anyway. So it is virtually impossible for me to explain how this works, but I'll have a go. We've got a positive there and a negative there and then we've got a positive there and a negative there so in this pack alone there's four packs four packs of 20s so we've got 20s there we've got 20s there 20s there and 20s there i'm trying to do this through the camera sorry no 20s there so they're each independent now these wires will be balance wires between the pack cells. We'll say theoretically that that cell goes short. Now what will happen is this will fuse. I don't know where it will fuse, it might, you know, it, it doesn't matter, that will fuse or the other side will fuse, one of them will fuse and then when it's burnt out it will go open circuit, eventually it will go open circuit. I mean it might have set fire to bloody things, I don't know, but anyway that's the theory behind it. Now, what will happen then is that pack will go, that whole pack will go open circuit. Now obviously I've got the positive and the negative connected here, but it won't matter purely because it will be open circuit. And also the same with any of these, if any of these cells pops, it will fuse that wire and then it will be just open circuit but the battery will still continue to work so you can still get home. That's the idea behind it anyway. I mean, someone's going to say I'm wrong on that. <laughs> you haven't thought about this, that and the other and it's a bad idea, but that's the theory behind it. The wiring is a lot worse, a lot harder to do because there's a lot more involved in it, but in, in my calculation, it's a lot better design. I've had to put, obviously, all the wiring on there which I've rooted in position there's no wires that cross apart from here and that actually goes underneath I've got to keep this as slim line as possible you see because there's, there's, there's not that much space now the positive and the negatives I haven't done yet purely because this is the last thing I'm going to do to it because it, it's, it's bloody you know it's thick wire it's not as thick as I wanted it but this is 6AWG and it's going to go across there on the positive you know from there across there across there across there now this has only got to handle 80 amps not the full 160 amps so 6AWG is going to be fine I used this stuff on my bloody version 3 e-bike and it didn't get hot it got warm but not hot so I'm going to put that across there and then I'm going to have the two wires coming off, that pack there and this pack here. So there's going to be two positives, two negatives, and it will share the load. And at the end of it, I don't know yet, <laughs> but that's what that's going to do.